Jenna, the toothbrush girl, was definitely worth all of the many, 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 many auditions that I gave to Beyonce and Bo. <laughs> Jenna, the toothbrush girl, I remember, I remember, and I, I could be wrong, that she was kind of strong. Like, didn't she in some way stand up to Jerry in some way that then made the whole toothbrush thing unfold? I was drinking a celery and I brought it up too fast and I banged it into my lip and then I knocked your toothbrush into the toilet and I wasn't able to tell you before you could use it. What? I'm sorry. When were you gonna tell me this? Obviously, never. What did I say? Oh. I, put, I put something of yours in the toilet. There. Now something of yours has been in the toilet. What? <laughs> well, what did you put in there? I gotta run. He never knew what it was, so it bugged him. Ooh, so Jenna was super smart about Jerry's, like, neuroses. That's really good. That was smart on her part. So she was a good match for him. You should have stuck with her. <laughs> <laughs> if I dropped someone's toothbrush into the toilet, I would take it and throw it away immediately. And then I would tell them, your toothbrush is missing because I mistakenly dropped it in the toilet and so I had to throw it away. I'm really, really sorry. I'll buy you a new one, like a normal person. Right? I mean, that's what a normal human being would do. Who wasn't in the Seinfeld world <laughs> of neuroses, <laughs> right? I used to be on Melrose Place. That was my first job. And then there was a break and then there was Sex and the City. But I love Seinfeld. And I watched Seinfeld like, you know, super religiously. I mean, it was the thing at the time. So I must have read for Seinfeld five times, six times, like so many times. Like whatever part, if they called me in, I would go. There'd be everybody you knew there. Everybody. I mean, just women, just women everywhere. It's 100,000 revolutions a second. It's the most powerful one they make. Like I'm holding a blender. Very, very, very panicked to go to Seinfeld, as one can imagine, right? I mean, seriously, like, cannot believe I'm there. Super nervous, super excited. Now, this was late, late in the Seinfeld you know, trajectory, right? Where they got to film stuff, like whatever they wanted, sometimes with an audience, sometimes without an audience. Then when show night came, they would put the parts that they previously filmed on the uh, monitor for the audience to see and laugh. So it kind of made sense all, all together. And so when Jerry and I first, I can't remember if we shot or we were just rehearsing. And I was like, oh, you know, gosh, I'm kind of nervous. He was like, what are you nervous for? You know how So then the audience comes. It's the night of filming. And right before action, Jerry leans over and he whispers, 38 million. What? And he says, 38 million people are watching. Like, what the fuck? What are you doing to me? I was like, I can't function like this. So that's how Jerry found his fun. Scaring the guest stars to death. <laughs> hi, 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 hi. Um, Julia enters at one point, like in some big way, and then I say something to her, or he introduces me to her, and she was like, "Tell me what you're gonna do." And I was like, oh my God, oh my God, "I'm so scared." Uh, I was like, "I'm gonna, uh, uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna say it, like." Blah, blah, blah. Like, I have no idea. Like, I just totally blanked out in front of her because, of course, I so revered her. And I kind of just wanted her to tell me what to do. I was scared. I was so scared. <laughs> but anyway, it turned out great. Oh, my God. It's Banya and Jenna. Who? The toothbrush in the toilet bowl. <laughs> and then I remember getting to go back. And the reason I got to go back was because Jerry and I had this conversation about how... Here he was doing the show about people who live in New York, yet they never ran into their exes. And that normally in New York, you always run into your exes because it's kind of a small place and you're walking around the same areas and you're at the same restaurants. So that's why I got to go back, which I was like, just so excited to get to go back and be on the set. You know what I mean? This is the thing about writing. Brilliant writing lasts forever. It doesn't matter if it tracks perfectly with the trends or the times. Brilliant
comedy writing especially lives forever because it is so incredibly hard to do. And having comic timing, I think also for the actors, you know, you either have it or you don't. It's not something that can be learned. You can try, you can practice, but like you've got to have it and you've got to turn it on and you've got to have that right marriage of writing and the other actors and the chemistry coming together, none of which you can control. So both of those shows, Friends and Seinfeld, both had that in a way where they should live forever. I hope they live forever. Again, Seinfeld should, of course, be, you know, towards the top of the Comedy Hall of Fame that I don't think exists, but it should be. It should exist.